Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. <clears throat> Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine and oil increase. reading from the first letter of John. See what the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. That is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. 
Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, for their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the, the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God, and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who redeemed Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking, walking, talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been more known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one holy and triune God, amen. Please be seated. This is a special morning because you get the gospel in two different versions. The gospel appointed for this Sunday is the one printed in your bulletin, and it has close connections with that story of the road to Emmaus that Walter read. In fact, I was going to allude to the Emmaus story in my sermon. So it's nice you get to hear both. So I'm going to read this morning's gospel as appointed because that is the text on which I'm going to preach. This is the gospel of the Lord. Jesus himself stood among the di disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and thought they were seeing a ghost. 
He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in Jesus' name to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. You are witnesses of these things. What does it mean for you to witness something? What does it mean for you to be a witness? I know it's not a particularly Episcopalian word. Perhaps a, a better word, a more palatable word for us Episcopalians might be, actually two words, storytelling. Storytelling. What story do you have to share with the world? What is your Easter story? Our lessons this morning offer us two stories of the reality of the resurrected Jesus in the lives of the apostles. They are stories of power and possibility. The reality of Christ's new life that Luke presents to us is directly linked to the commissioning of the apostles to go out into the world for the healing, reconciliation, and restoration of all people. And our reading from the Acts of the Apostles is Peter's testimony of how life in Christ brings about transformation, wholeness, and new life. Both stories tell that narrative that Jesus' resurrection is not some nice theological mythical image, but rather a flesh and blood reality. A flesh and blood reality that has ongoing consequences for those of us who profess to follow Jesus and who are sent into the world in God's mission. So the question before all of us this morning is, what does it mean for us, individually and corporately, to witness to the reality of new life in Jesus? How do we own the story of what God has done in Jesus? in our individual lives, as the body of Christ here at St. John's in West Hartford, 
across our state as the Episcopal Church in Connecticut, in the United States, and to the ends of the earth. Let's begin with that gospel appointed for this morning. Luke's rendition of Jesus' appearance to the disciples follows immediately after that story of the road to Emmaus. You heard that story of Emmaus, how Jesus walked with two disciples, how they were so downtrodden after the crucifixion, and also how they recognized the risen Lord in the breaking of the bread. These are similar themes in the gospel that was appointed for today. Now, as the disciples were gathered together, discussing among themselves the news that they had heard about Jesus' resurrection, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Now, the disciples, and I actually share some feelings here with them, not fully believing because if Jesus showed up in bodily form in front of me, I wonder if I would believe. The disciples, not fully believing what they heard and what they saw with their own eyes, are startled and terrified. And they think they must be seeing a ghost. But Jesus, knowing what was in their hearts, asks, why are you afraid? Why don't you believe that it's me right here in front of you? If you don't believe that I've been risen from the dead, then feel my hands and feet. Touch and see me that I am real. And then as if seeing and touching were not enough, Jesus asked for something to eat. The fact that Jesus in his risen body, is hungry, is in need of food, confirms the reality of the risen Lord in full bodily form. He's hungry. And so they give him some broiled fish to eat. What could be more real than eating broiled fish? More than any other evangelist, Luke stresses this real bodily form of Jesus eating, whether with those disciples on the road to Emmaus or here eating fish with the other disciples. Note here that this resurrection appearance, this reality of the risen Jesus, then gets immediately linked to Jesus' mission, God's mission in the world. Through this simple mealtime gathering, the extraordinary miracle of Easter is brought full circle from the Last Supper to this post-resurrection appearance and beyond. That's why Jesus, while dining with these disciples, opens their minds to the truth of Scripture and makes clear that God's saving story is for the whole world. From Moses and the prophets, Jesus showed that the Messiah had to suffer, die, and be raised from the dead. Gathered around the table, Jesus has this little tutorial for his disciples and makes it all clear. He links the story of God's narrative in God's saving work in the world with his story. And he says, my mission, and thus your mission, is to be about that healing presence of God in the world, to be about restoring all people to unity with God and each other in the risen Christ. The proclamation of God's unconditional love 
and forgiveness for the world. And then the disciples' role as healing agents of God's reconciliation and restoration was to begin in Jerusalem with this band and go to the ends of the earth. And that is exactly what Jesus' followers do, do at some cost. And so we hear in our first lesson from the Acts of the Apostles how they began to live into this saving mission of God for those who are broken and in need of healing and wholeness. The occasion for Peter's speech is the healing at the temple gate, at the temple gate, of one who had been lame from birth. <coughs> Peter begins by saying that the healing which has so amazed the crowd was not of his or John's doing, but rather was done through the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God and Father of Jesus Christ. Peter and John proclaim it is Jesus who is the author of life, the reconciler of the nations the one who had healed the lame man. Peter says to those who witnessed this, this healing, by faith in Jesus, this man was made strong. And the faith that was through Jesus has given him perfect health in the presence of all of you. It is through faith in Jesus that the lame walk, the blind see, and those in prison are set free. Peter and John and the other apostles following Jesus are sent out as the body of Christ to be agents of God's reconciling mission of healing, wholeness, and restoration. And here, Companions in Christ, is where it comes home to all of us. Where this story of Jesus' encounter with his disciples, where the healing work of Peter and John get attached to our stories. We Christians, we disciples of Jesus, we followers of Jesus, are empowered and commissioned to be about this work of God in the world. To be commissioned, commissioned in God's mission in our neighborhoods, in our families, in this state, and to the ends of the earth. That's what our baptism is all about. In our baptism, we become followers of the triune God, of Jesus, and commissioned to be about that healing work of God in the world. As apostles, we own our own identities as disciples and apostles. Now, in a few moments, Meg and Ted and Claire, Elsa, Emma, Jake, Troy, Maggie, Lily, Gus, Sophie, Kylie, John, Caroline, and Melissa will all come forward to reaffirm in a very deliberate way their baptismal vows in the rite of confirmation. In doing so, these incredible young people will be affirming publicly their own personal connection to God's story in the resurrected Jesus. In joining their story to God's story, they will profess their desire to be witnesses 
witnesses to and agents of God's mission in the world. They'll be owning their baptismal identity as disciples, followers of Jesus, and as apostles sent into the world, like Peter and John, to be about the healing of the world. And this invitation that will be accepted by these young people to join their story to God's story is not only for those folk being confirmed here this morning. In the baptismal covenant that all of us will be invited to affirm, each and every one of us gathered here at St. John's this morning will be invited to join our role in God's mission in the resurrected Jesus. In the baptismal covenant, we will affirm that we want to be disciples of the triune God and profess our belief in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then after we affirm our belief in God in those first three questions of the baptismal covenant, we'll follow with five other questions and promises to be God's apostles in the world, living lives of worship and prayer, lives of forgiveness, of proclamation, yes, that E word of evangelism, of service, and of justice making. We will attach our stories to God's story and then join in that apostolic vocation in worship and prayer, in forgiveness, in evangelism, in service, and in justice making. So companions in Christ, and those of you who are coming forward to be confirmed, let us indeed be witnesses. Let us tell the story of the reality of the bodily resurrection of Jesus, our Savior. From here in West Hartford to the ends of the earth, let us join in God's mission to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. Let's try it again. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. Alleluia. Candidates for confirmation will now be presented. I present these for confirmation. Come forward. Come forward to the rail. You have your bulletins? Very good. Teddy, come on down. You can get more space. I want everyone to be able to be seen. Tell you what, turn your right shoulder to the, turn your left shoulder to the congregation. Now scrunch up a little bit more. There you go. Okay, these first two questions are addressed to all of you. Page six. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. And with God's grace, I will follow him as my Savior and Lord. This 
next question is addressed to the rest of us. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Then standing as we are able, let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures. He Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the mercy of God, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. We proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. Do you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? We strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these, your servants, the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to ask the congregation to please be seated. And at the time of the confirmation of your loved one, those of you who have walked this path and and brought them to this place of decision in their lives, parents, godparents, grandparents, mentors, when your loved one comes forward, please feel free to stand where you are. And that's for really two reasons. One is so that all of us can know who it is who have supported these incredible young adults to come to this time and place of the profession of their faith. And then secondly, you can see a little bit better, so feel free to stand in your place. Jacob.
Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Jacob with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service. And sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O oh Lord, your servant Caroline with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O oh Lord, your servant Maisie with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O oh Lord, your servant Margaret with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. Troy. Strengthen, O oh Lord, your servant Troy with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Meg with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O oh Lord, your servant Teddy with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Claire with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O oh Lord, your servant Lillian with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen.
Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Sophie with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Elsa with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Emma with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Gus with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Kylie with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant John with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them. And so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I think this would be as good a time as any to thank God for these wonderful young adults and thank them for their profession of adult belief in Jesus our Savior. How about that? I invite you to please stand for the peace. And as I warn the confirmands that now that they're adults in the church, we're going to put them right to work. And we're going to invite, I've invited them to help me bid the peace this morning for this gathered body. So remember the words, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Got it? Ready? One, two.
The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. everybody. Peace of the Lord. Good morning. Please be seated. Welcome to St. John's on this most special day. It's not every day or even every year that we have outstanding compromise. We have 15 this year. And so that's much to be proud of of this beautiful place, our spiritual home. And one thing I want to say to each and every one of them is that this will always be your spiritual home, your touchstone, wherever life may take you, whatever goals you may seek in this life, and I hope they are many. Know that St. John's will always be here, and hopefully it will always be in your heart. We want to welcome newcomers, those who haven't been here before or maybe haven't been here in a while. Please feel, feel, feel free to fill out the pew card in front of you and put it in the offering plate, and I'll be more than happy to get in touch with you and share more about St. John's, our story, and learn a bit about your story. This is a special day as we have Bishop Ian, part of our parish family, to worship with us, to celebrate, and to confirm. And to truly celebrate, we're going to have a special reception immediately after the service, sponsored by the parents of, the, of our confirmands, and a special cake. Again, a true time to celebrate as you enter in this new passage of your spiritual life. We also have a healing minister available at the font. So if you would like a blessing for yourself or for someone else, please feel free to come uh, to the font during the Eucharist. We are going to have a special blessing of our community garden. This is a new endeavor our vestry has fully supported as a way to reach out beyond the walls of St. John's to feed those who do not have enough, who don't have an opportunity to get fresh produce in a grocery store desert where we are located. So you'll hear more about it as J.P. Evans is taking this on as his Eagle Scout project. He will be leading this wonderful ministry so look for news of that, May 6th. We will have a blessing on site. And then the next Sunday, we will also have a forum explaining more about what we're doing and how each and every one of you can be part of this ministry using these gifts as we live out the calling to be good stewards in God's creation. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, whatever struggle, challenge that you're dealing with, Know that you're welcome to come forward to take the body and blood of Christ, to uphold us, to sustain us for all the things that we deal with in this broken world and to make good the vow that we have taken in our baptism. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, your sins your Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he us. By his wounds, he And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in this unending hymn. O God, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we wait his Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord God of our mothers, God of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only 
and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, God, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of God for you, the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
stand or kneel as you are able for the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God, and God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day, this Easter tide, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah! Hallelujah!